Hello viewers, welcome to our lecture series on CSR and uh, the topic of my today's discussion is uh, CSR and Sustainable Development in Practice. As the term itself, the topic itself is suggesting that uh, we are going to look at CSR and Sustainable Development from the practical uh, perspective that in practice what exactly is going on and keeping that uh, in our mind I have set the agenda of today's lecture. I will be first telling about some pertinent questions, the questions before the practitioners, the question before the corporate uh, entities which are actually looking forward to contribute towards uh, CSR activities that is uh, corporate social responsibility. They are very much aware of their social responsibility and the way they are performing. So basically they have to answer to these pertinent questions. So I will be telling about those questions and then possible answers and uh, eventually we will be uh, moving towards global examples that is a community development project in Bangladesh. I will be sharing an example from African region and uh, eventually we will talk about the India and CSR that uh, what is there into the CSR and in Indian perspective although, although we have already discussed about uh, the Indian uh, legal framework about CSR but when it comes to talk about uh, CSR in practice uh, it is very much significant and pertinent to talk about India as a country because uh, it is one of the uh, one of the most agile and uh, uh, developing uh, agile developing country which is contributing towards CSR with the help of a legal framework with the help of a uh, legislation that is companies act 2013 section 135 their provisions are there and uh, we are actually implementing we have implemented those uh, provisions so let us first talk about uh, some important questions which we are supposed to address the first question is that we need to address the questions of uh, uh, some important aspect that is of living standard, exploitation, poverty, unemployment and how to promote human development uh, in general. It has been uh, almost entirely uh, in the pre-serve of governments. So earlier when we were looking at these topics that is uh, either it is uh, of uh, upgrading the standard of living of uh, poor people or if we have to eradicate poverty or if we have to eliminate unemployment, it used to be the responsibility of government as far as developing regions are concerned and even in developed countries, uh, people used to think that th it is a duty of the government to provide uh, uh, these facilities to ensure that uh, people are having the adequate uh, standard of living, they are not being exploited. The, they are not uh, you know uh, below poverty line or, or, or they are having adequate level of employment to carry on their uh, to carry on their, uh, their their routine activities or to earn their livelihood. So the, how to promote human development uh, it has almost uh, uh, been the, the preserve of uh, governments. But what we need to explore, explore here is that why corporations would be interested in such development activities. It is a question by the corporate entities which is floated to the government entities that why why my company should be interested in in developing people in, in uh, contributing towards the poverty eradication or generating employment they they always ask a question to to themselves and also to society at large that my duty as a corporate entity is to to manufacture a product in which I am dealing with and I need to provide it to the general public to the most I am responsible, I am uh, answerable or I am accountable towards my employees who are working with me. But when we talk about their survival, the survival is dependent on the society. Every, every resource for my company I am going to receive from the society at large. So what is my duty towards society that need to be answered. So, if we take uh, examples from a number of emerging market economies, we find that uh, there are uh, n number of examples uh, indicating or reflecting the way companies are basically operating. But two uh, very interesting and specific developments from global perspective, one is uh, India's governmental CSR rules that is uh, the initiative by the government by imposing or implementing a legal framework by creating, generating uh, or formulating a legal framework for implementing CSR in India and uh, there is another study of a surprising uh, world leader in CSR from Africa and uh, to be very specific it is from Kenya. So, in African region too where they do not, uh, 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 such countries they are basically struggling for their survival and uh, they are also uh, contributing towards the so social responsibility that is corporate social responsibility in African region also. So I will be giving you these two important examples and uh, uh, we will also talk about uh, the perspective of Bangladesh, the way they have 
uh, contributed towards CSR and I will take example of one corporate entity. Uh, although there are number of examples, there are number of companies which are operating uh, for the betterment of society. But just to just to highlight, uh, just to give a reflection because the time is limited for us to have a discussion on such topic. Uh, so, I will be giving you one very particular, one example from each region, one example from each country where the companies are contributing towards the betterment of society. So, uh, if we if we look at the British American Tobacco uh, Company, that is BAT, it is known as BAT, British American Tobacco Company, uh, Tobacco PLC. It is basically a British multinational company which is manu which manufactures and sells tobacco products. And uh, the company was established in uh, the year 1902, and uh, it is having its headquarters in London. And uh, as of 2021 this company is basically the largest tobacco company in the world based on their net sales. So, if we look at this company that is called British American Tobacco, they are basically uh, known as the largest tobacco company in the world based on net sales. And uh, if we if we look at uh, the case study, the way they are working, why this, this company has been chosen? Because their work, the, the area in which they are operating, that is not regarded as uh, uh, a, a good cause for the society. It is going to, uh, tobacco is supposed to be uh, injurious to, to the health and that is why I thought of taking uh, up the example of this company that the way this company is contributing towards the uh, social responsibility. And uh, if we look at the uh, location of this company, there is a place called uh, Kushtia. It is a town which is approximately 5 hours drive from the capital uh, of Bangladesh that is Dhaka and it is located uh, uh, near to the project sites and the project sites are basically congregated around the central tobacco production uh, processing districts and uh, they are basically taking the cut, cut tobacco, it is basically transported to Dhaka by road for uh, the final production. So, basically these are the villages from where they are uh, taking the raw material and forwarding it to the to their manufacturing unit. And the overall approach uh, in Bangladesh is basically based on direct links with the tobacco communities. They are having their direct one-to-one uh, -one contact with the, with the community which is uh, involved in growing that tobacco and there are no restrictions on placing bad signs uh, prominently near to the project sites. And Bangladesh, if we look at their community development, this company's community development project, uh, they, they are active in uh, uh, CSI in four main areas, that is corporate social investment, they call it. They call it CSI, corporate social investment. And there are four significant areas towards which they are contributing. One is environment, second is education, third is uh, health and hygiene and fourth is socio-economy. So, these are four important areas which are uh, regarded as the pertinent areas uh, for the society or you can say the key result areas, KRAs, where uh, the companies are supposed to contribute uh, towards the society by the way of uh, uh, working for the betterment of society by, by the and what they call as CSI that is corporate social investment that my company is investing in these social for these social issues and uh, it ranges from environment, education, health and hygiene to socio-economy. And they basically link uh, this into three main projects uh, that is community development of tobacco farmers. Uh, the first is community development of uh, those uh, uh, farmers, second is IT training uh, and for that they, they, had a, they have a project called the Shari project and last one is afforestation. Uh, they call it afforestation because they are basically uh, uh, working towards the greening of the environment by the way of plantation and all. So, uh, if we look at their contribution, what they are doing, first of all, they are basically working for the community development of those farmers which are, who are actually involved into the cultivation of uh, this product. Although they, they, since it is their duty to, it is their duty to, to uh, produce because their product is, is, is basically based on this raw material, but still they are basically trying to have their own impact. They are trying to contribute positively to the society by the way of uh, uh, community development of those farmers who are uh, involved into the cultivation activity and for that they have they have several plans. IT training of uh, that uh, the Shari project they are offering uh, an IT training and uh, last one is afforestation. So, with the exception of that uh, the Shari IT program and uh, this uh, what you call as afforestation program. Uh, if we look at their outcome, what is the outcome of uh, these uh, programs which they have implemented 
uh, as a corporate entity. You find that, uh, th that all these activities they are based around tobacco based communities and they call it community development initiatives. So, whatever plan they are formulating, whatever uh, activity, whatever goal or target they are uh, setting for themselves in terms of their social responsiveness, they, it is basically it, it roams around uh, uh, those communities and they call it uh, the CDI that is community development initiatives and they are basically working for the betterment of those communities. So, the question comes how did this tobacco company BAT is going to select a project in, uh, in, in that country? What is the criteria for selecting a project in, in that specific country? So, they, they have a very well defined uh, criteria, they selected uh, these projects on the basis of stakeholder concerns and uh, the country de country's development priorities. So, there are two important things which uh, becomes the base for uh, selecting uh, a project in that, in that specific country that this is a project on in which my, my uh, uh, company is going to contribute. And for that there are two parameters, one is what are the stakeholder concerns. Who are the stakeholders? Of course, uh, each and every party which is directly or indirectly connected with the company is going to be called as a stakeholder. So, the stakeholder concern starts from their, their customers, their supplier, their competitors, their uh, the banks from where they are taking loan and of course, the government. So, they are basically, they, they decide it on the basis of the concerns raised by the stakeholders and secondly, what is the priority of uh, my country in terms of uh, developing that nation and uh, according to, uh, the, to the priorities set by the government, they, the company also decides its own priorities. And while designing the project, they, the good use uh, was made of bad skills with uh, a specific focus on their management and technology experience. So, whatever skills they have that is basically deployed for the betterment of uh, those, uh, uh, you know, stakeholders for the betterment of those projects, for implementing those projects in an efficient and effective manner. And, and while doing so, their priority is certainly closely linked to the, uh, to the bad business operations and of course, there is close involvement in CSI activities by their tobacco leaf division. So, while deciding the criteria of how to select a project, which project to finance, on which project my company should work, these two important uh, aspects are present. One is the concern by, of the stakeholders and second is uh, the development priorities set by the company. Now, the question comes, what is the selection criteria used for communities to receive uh, that assistance, community development assistance? So, they, the communities which have a, they, they, they have set certain criteria and what is that criteria? First one is the communities which have a high density of bad registered tobacco farmers. So, those, so the farmers which are registered with that company, wherever the density of uh, those farmers are there, suppose, suppose if I am selecting an area where I have to contribute. So, I would be choosing that, that segment or that part of the country where uh, where the, the, the number of uh, tobacco farmers which are registered with my company are on the higher side because it is always good to, uh, th the company thinks that I would actually, we would actually work for those suppliers who are, uh, those farmers who are actually working for us because they are the one who are providing raw material to our company. So, in doing so, they, they, may, uh, they may look little selfish, but uh, they are logical in that way that uh, we are concerned with those tobacco farmers who are actually our stakeholders because they are the suppliers and, and the second one is the, the second criteria is that we will be giving significance to those farmers who can serve as ambassadors for uh, their initiatives or, or, or those farmers who can enthusiastically try them out and uh, serve as good advocates or become the ambassador for that company that uh, see this company is looking forward, the, this company is concerned about its own suppliers and, and we being a farmer since we are working for this company, our concerns are, are uh, basically uh, uh, met out by these companies, our concerns are properly taken uh, up by the company because we are supplying our raw material to them or they are getting their raw material from us, so they are concerned about us. And uh, demonstrators of these activities, uh, you know, from whom other farmers will learn and will follow. That is their objective that see, see if a particular farmer is working for my company or they are, they are offering their, their agriculture produce to my company and their concerns are taken care of by my company properly, then it would become a source of motivation for other farmers. So, on one hand, they are contributing towards the social responsibility by the way of uh, uh, taking care of the concerns of those farmers 
and on the other hand they are basically acting uh, they are basically creating their their ambassadors that these uh, farmers they would have a they would actually uh, play the role of a catalyst they would actually attract the other farmers also to join this uh, company so this would actually ensure that in future the companies will never run short of the supplies that is their raw material so there would not be any scarcity of the raw material and that is why they don't call it uh, csr they call it csi that is corporate social investment so it is their investment whatever amount they are spending they are basically this company considers it as an investment and the communities that have a need for uh, those initiatives so see we should we should take it as a positive contribution of this company this 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 is not the only company there are number of companies which are working this is called targeted contribution so we should appreciate that uh, uh, such companies they are taking care of their stakeholders and as i already told you that uh, while selecting uh, the farmers they are they have basically a criteria of uh, of selecting those areas where the density of uh, population of the farmers who are basically the supplier of the company is on the higher side or or where, where the density is very high there only they are basically uh, contributing so their objective is to take care of that community which is contributing to the uh, development of or which is which is contributing towards the running uh, the smooth functioning of the company and if we look at that program number of interventions uh, are there to promote sustainable development within the rural village community and there are eight components uh, which the company highlights that on these eight components company is contributing uh, first one is educational assistance they they offer assistance for the education of uh, the the children of uh, the farmers who are basically uh, working as a stakeholder and after education comes health and they they do have programs for primary health care support they they have a program under the health uh, primary health care category they have a program for malaria prevention uh, the sanitation support is there vegetable growing uh, facilities there they also create compost pits for the betterment of uh, the the preserve for preserving the water resources cause uh, they need that water supply also for their uh, irrigation activities of the farmers and uh, the next is green manuring and lastly there is a uh, there is a very popular uh, project which is funded by this companies uh, that is called neem decoction they call it they call it basically neem decoction the leaves from the from the tree of neem they, that acts as a natural pesticide so they are basically concerned about the the uh, less use of pesticide they they feel that pesticide should not be used by these farmers so apart from the other components they have this component which is one of the most popular uh, component uh, in in that specific region where th this company is contributing so my dear learners basically why i wanted to highlight this kind of activity that dis despite being an industry which is creating a product where your product is not uh, safe for uh, not regarded as safe for your consumers still uh, whatever company can do in whatever uh, manner the company is able to contribute they are contributing in their own way so they are trying to and uh, of course there is a statutory warning that uh, use of tobacco is injurious to health so when we were talking about uh, uh, the global reporting initiatives we were also we also had a look at had a glance um, on those parameters where when while deciding your corporate social investment uh, or where you decide while deciding your uh, your your social responsibility uh, question you were looking at uh, not investing in those projects which are not good for the society and here the business of company is uh, is, is is to sell is is to manufacture and sell tobacco which is not good uh, for the health of general public so still this company is contributing in its own way by the way of offering assistance to its community wherever they are working in terms of their education in terms of healthcare facilities vegetable growing or or whatever uh, problems they are surrounded with so they are trying to solve those problems and that is the beauty of uh, their C csr initiative and if we look at the outcome of uh, this this project of the company the exact number of farmers with whom the company is working it is not easy to quantify because the different initiatives they they are basically they they encompass of uh, uh, different communities different farmers uh, and, and that 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 is basically of dynamic in nature that is dynamic in nature and uh, the number those farmers and communities they keep on changing so the number may either increase or may decrease so that is why they don't have exact data 
but if we look at the beneficiary which they have reported among more than 28000 registered farmers and more than uh, uh, 1700 villages in which this company is having its own registered uh, farmers the, where they are they are living this company is contributing and and if we look at the percentage contribution approximately 90% of the farmers and 100% of villages are covered by the afforestation uh, initiative so imagine that the farmers who are basically working uh, who are there selling their 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 agriculture produced to, to these companies they are they are well paid for that they get payment for that but after even getting the payment they are getting support from the company so so look at the look at the magnitude of contribution made by this company that all the villages wherever the, these farmers are there who are basically ensuring supply to the to this company they are basically covered by the afforestation initiative so 90% of the farmers and 100% of the villages they are covered by this and uh, if we look at the green manuring uh, initiative the company has reported that approximately 50% of farmers are covered by green manuring uh, activity and 10% uh, of the farmers approximately they are covered by the rest of the initiatives so majority of the contribution is basically coming from the uh, coming for the afforestation initiative that they are basically concerned towards environment and the second area of concern is basically green manuring so they are if we, if you look at the the segment wise contribution they are contributing significantly towards the uh, well being of environment and and for the remaining areas their contribution is 10% so even if they are able to contribute by by their own little uh, steps that actually is going to make a difference for the society at large so this was one example from uh, a, a company which is not uh, working in the area where the product is not uh, regarded as socially responsible that company is also uh, acting responsibly towards their stakeholders so this was one example from global perspective there is another example from african region because whenever we look at this continent either we we talk about chronic poverty or we talk about the kind of struggle they which is being uh, which is uh, with which they are surrounded with so still we think that this type of company can also uh, can also contribute to the uh, social responsibility concerns so that is why i thought it appropriate to take one example from this region also and and it is regarded by the academicians basically they regard it as a as a surprising fact that that it is it is a huge surprise from africa uh, that there is a company called uh, 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 safaricom it is basically a mobile phone operator and uh, they are paying the largest amount of tax to the government to their government uh, which is operating in kenya so to kenyan government they are the highest tax payer they are paying the largest amount of taxes to their government and it is basically in a way it is a reflection that csr or sustainability pays they are indicating that uh, we are profitable that is why we are paying taxes and and why we are profitable cause we are socially responsive so they are giving a reflection that csr or sustainability is paying and it publishes an annual sustainability report um, uh, and and it keeps closely to the gri guidelines so if we look at the global reporting initiatives guidelines they are basically creating their report on the lines of global reporting initiative guidelines so imagine this company is is making a good amount of profit profit paying highest taxes to their government and and while doing so what is their focus point what is their point of focus the focus is on ethical management through uh, treating their key st stakeholders responsibly their their prime focus is that we'll be working ethically whatever profit we are earning that would be earned by the ethical ways and means and they would be responsible towards their stakeholders not only that in the, in the adoption and uh, adaptation or imaginative application of the materiality approach it is it is vouched by uh, by many experts including gri that is global reporting initiative so the question comes why a surprise why are you calling it uh, it a surprise so it is surprise cause the safari comes uh, strong anti corruption policy uh, in uh, and the data is from 2014 that in the year 2014 if we look at the data out of it staff of to, total staff of 4000 permanent employees uh, they they have 50% employees from uh, who are actually female female staff is the percentage of female staff is 50% and to 16 employees they have basically issued uh, a letter of warning 
for anti corruption for for issues related to corruption so 16 employees they have uh, they have been issued uh, warning letters 56 dismissals dismissals they have made and seven reported to law enforcement agencies so the surprise is that the key objective of the company is basically uh, to to embed sustainability among their 4000 staff members as well as re reaching out to their suppliers so they basically uh, take the system approach to CSR, which we have already discussed when I was telling you about the, the theories and models of CSR, we had a look, we had a discussion uh, on the topic of system approach to CSR and they are basically talking about the sustainability function uh, directly under uh, Safari Com's, uh, uh, Com's CEO. So, the country where uh, for them, uh, you know, uh, raising voice against corruption is, is something which is uh, really a surprising fact because they are already struggling with their own problems and, and uh, they are they, around 30 to 40 employees, they work on different aspects of sustainability and their objective, their key aim, their goal is to continue to train staff to be aware of their own model. So this was a story from the from from the Kenya where a uh, where a company is basically uh, ensuring that there is uh, no corruption uh, in any of the activities in any of the supply chain of its own company. So that is another uh, example from that reason. And if we look at India and CSR, India has actually made some initial steps in um, including uh, including CSR as a government uh, framework. Although in, since 2013, it's been a decade now, 10 years. Uh, are gone by and uh, the government has uh, the, the legal framework is actually contributing positively towards the social well-being of the people and 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 here i would like to mention that india is not the only country where the csr is uh, being mandatory or it is under the legal framework there are countries like mauritius and denmark they too have their own legal frameworks and uh, india is uh, as we already have discussed that it has implemented uh, the legal framework of spending 2% of the profits of a company if it is fulfilling those cert those conditions in terms of turnover and profitability. Although Mauritius, if you look, they, they, ha they are insisting on 1% company profile uh, to be allocated to CSR projects. So, my dear learners, in this way, we had a discussion on, the, on this very topic of the global practices of CSR. I hope you must have understood and enjoyed today's lecture of mine. The acknowledgement towards uh, this uh, topic goes to the book by Michael Hopkins, that is CSR and Sustainability from the Margins to the Mainstream. So, I hope you must have enjoyed today's lecture of mine. Thank you so much.